she's an angel and she doesn't mind dancing with the demon. That's why I'd move mountains, dry seas, and hydrate the desert if it made her happy. She brought goodness to the world. It was only right that I made it hers, along with the two tiny beauties that shared her hazel eyes and perfect smile. For them, I'd do whatever. For them, I'd become whoever. He's a protector and a far cry from the menace they labeled him. He's just misunderstood. That's why I climb the highest mountain, cross the widest sea, and conquer the desert if it brought us closer together. He brought so much wholesomeness to the world. It was only right that I made him a part of mine, along with my two minis that shared my stories and sentiment. Because of him, we found happiness. Because of him, we'd found home. Hello, my beautiful people, and welcome back to the Bibliophiles Bookcase. I am your host, Erica the Bibliophile, and we are here to discuss Luca by Gray Huffington. So let's jump into it. Um, I hadn't had this series like sitting in my library for a while, and it's just like it was being recommended to me. And I just never read it. And then I was like, okay, you know, cleaning off um, my bookshelf. And I'm just like, let me see what this is about. So I read the first book, fell in love, and like gobbled up the rest of the series. I'm waiting for, I forgot the release date for, who was that, Law? I'm waiting on Law's release. But I've read, you know, all the parts of, <clears throat> what is it, Eisenberg? Is it Eisenberg? I think it's Eisenberg. I forgot the last name. Um, So, I, if you can't tell, I'm going off the top of my head. And we just gonna rock, because that's how we rock over here. So, like I said, first part is Luca. Luca is fast-paced. So, if that's not the type of story that you're into, you might not like this one. But as we get to the rest of the series, you know what? Let me save that for that because I got words and I feel ways, especially about um, lyric. No, the main one I got a problem Lake is the main one I got a problem with, but I'll talk about him in his episode. So we are first introduced to Ever, who has two small children and is running away from her abusive boyfriend so she is going to stay with her friend lyric and um you know just so she can get back on her feet now where ever what i want to say like she's down not to say that lyric isn't down to earth but it's just like you know ever put me in the mind of like cree what was her name on the show um winifred on a different world before she was going to law school, just free and natural and just that type. And whereas Lyric is more refined, you know, draped in jewelry, they come, she comes from a rich family. So um, Lyric had a boyfriend at one point who attacked her as well. And her big brother Luca pulled up while he was attacking her and beat the man till he killed him. And he went to jail for 10 years and he's being released soon. So ever, you know, she holds her children real close to her chest, but her mother takes them for a week. She's like, you know, let them come over here, be with grandma and grandpa. And, you know, you just take a week, relax, just, have some time to yourself. And of course, at first she's hesitant because she's just like, I don't know if I want to do that, if I'm comfortable with that. And the mom is just like, girl, come on here. And she's like, you know what? You right. That's what I'm going to do. And so, you know, Lyric take her out. They they get drunk. And then I think it's like the next morning, they're taking a ride to pick up Luca. Now, Ever has never met him, shown no nothing about him. Um, 
I think she doesn't even know what does she know what he went to jail for? I believe so. anyway, it don't matter. So they go pick him up <laughs> and you know he sees Ever and he's just automatically in love. And you know, he's like, I'm on my grown man set thinking to himself. He's like, I'm on my grown man status, I'm ready for a, a wife and some kids, you know, like I'm just ready to settle down. And when he sees Ever, it's just like automatically I know I want that with her. So, um, what was it? He could tell they was hungover. So, they stop at the gas station and he buys them like Pedialyte and like some other stuff. I'm like, y'all need to drink this, you know, so y'all will be okay. So, then later, um, he links up with their brother because it's Luca, um, Lake, and then Lyric is the baby girl. Now, I'm, and this is just my point of view. When I read the story, Lake, I felt like, and, and, and it could be, uh, what is it, middle child syndrome, second child syndrome. It just felt like they was always leaving him out of stuff. Like, Luca and Lyric had a closer bond, and it was, it always felt like they was making fun of Lake, like, oh, this crybaby ass nigga, you know, just like, and calling him sensitive and all that type of stuff. But it's like, no, kind of on the outside looking in, y'all doing late wrong. I don't know. It was just, it's just how I felt. Because it was just like, they they hung out together. I don't know. It's just the way I was looking. I said, oh, y'all doing late wrong. I don't like this. But anyway, um, the brothers were planning to go out. And then Luca calls Lyric, like, you know, you want to spend some time with your brother? And she's like, you know I do. Um, And, okay, so back to that. So Lake got upset about that because it's like the whole time where you was gone, I couldn't drag her ass out the house. She didn't never want to spend no time with me. But as soon as you get out, like the very night you get out, she ready to go. And it's like, of course, because Lyric, and I, I, I understand. I just want everybody to know. I understand it's like she feels closer to Luca and she feels like she owes him something because he went to jail for, you know, um, killing her attacker. So basically it's her fault when it's just like, girl, that's not how this works. But you can't tell somebody that when they, they got their mind, you know, wrapped up in it. So we're not even going to talk about it. Um, but Luca tells her, you know, do not, <laughs> don't dock that door without your friend. And she's like, oh. He's like, Mm-mm, I want, I want her. So, like I said, it's very pat, uh, fast paced. Excuse me. And so, you know, of course, she agrees to go out. They get there, um, and Luca has a uh, jewelry for both of them, and it like re- like diamonds, dripping diamonds. Because he said when he saw his sister, he felt like she didn't have enough jewelry on, and he asked like, like, why you didn't buy her nothing? And he like, what? They like, man, don't don't start that bullshit with me. If she wanted something, all she had to do was say something. She didn't say anything to me, so I didn't buy her nothing. It's like she knows she wants something, all she gotta do is say it. And it's hers just like that. She didn't say shit, so she didn't get nothing. But anyway, he gives her a diamond bracelet, and then he also has that same bracelet. No, I think it's it was two bracelets. Forever. And she's like, you know, first of all, I don't know you. I'm I'm not looking to accept this from you. And he's like, basically like it's whatever take it it is what it is and so i think he no he does take her home they have words and she leaves the bracelets like on his front seat because they like had a little tip or whatever and so he what she take like he goes to see her apologize like you know i didn't mean to make you feel any type of way take the bracelets back and then he um <laughs> Oh, no. You know what? When she put the... <laughs> that's what it was. I forgot. When she put the bracelets on, he saw her watch. It was some type of, like, regular watch or whatever. And the nigga was offended. He like, please don't wear fake jewelry around me. Cause, and um, so he tells her to take it off, and she does. And she, like, put it in her purse that night and put the bracelets on. And she got up to, like, either go to the bathroom or do something. And he took the watch out of her purse 
with plans to buy her like a diamond watch later, which he did. And when he gave it to her, that's when he told her, please don't wear no fake jewelry around me. You know, it's nothing but basically boss status over here. She's like, you really need to pump your brakes because I just got out of a situation where um, basically I was love bombed and bought and, you know, he used it to his advantage to abuse me and where what am I trying to say? It's like where it's, it's quote unquote sexy. If it's not, it almost seems like he was, he basically didn't care. It's like he brushed off everything she was saying. Like that's what that fuck nigga did, but I'm not him. So that don't apply to what we got going on. And it's like, nigga, that's not how this works. Like she and I know people put a negative like connotation of the word victim, but she is a victim of domestic violence. And it's like, how did we get to this point? The nigga did the same shit you're doing now. And I'm saying no, but he constantly just kind of like brushed that shit off. Like I'm not him. We're not doing that. We like each other. The vibe is immaculate, which it was. And she admitted it. She's like, you know, I like him. I'm digging this, you know, but I want to take my time. Like, I just, like, I don't understand what you don't understand that I just left something like this. Like everything you're doing, he did the exact same thing. And in the end, it ended with me having to run away from him. And so, but he's like, man, we ain't on that. And, um, what was it? Cause he went to Lyric first and was like, you know, what's her deal? And Lyric like, I don't know. He's like, nah, that's the wrong move. I ain't gonna ask her. So when he talks to her, oh no, I think it was Lake. I'm I'm sorry. I'm. It's just one conversation I'm thinking about where it's brought to his attention. It's like you know, she got two girls. He's like, well, I guess I got two daughters then. Like basically coming out of jail it's like i had time to sit down and think i'm coming home to business like i got money um lake is the, he's like an architect and he built luca's home and had it like is uh what is it like real secure he had it all set up and everything so um it's like i'm coming home to businesses money it's good. I just need my woman and my kids. And so she introduces him to the girls and he immediately falls in love. And it's just like, you know, y'all are mine. Y'all belong to me. We going to do this thing. And so, like I said, it's very fast paced. It's just like, as soon as they meet each other, it's like ready made family. We doing this. And every time they have sex is without a condom and no pullout game. So of course that leads to her being pregnant and at first she tried to deny it. like she didn't want to take no test she's like i'm not pregnant i know my body whoop de whoop whatever and one day because she was working oh how did i forget this she was working at a restaurant called bailey's as a waitress and with her getting with luca he like man you need to quit that job i will give you the money to go ahead with your business because she she's um um um, what is she a baker so she wanted to bake cakes and open up her own cake shop you know what i mean and so he's like you know quit that job and i'm a back you on this which he did um and one day she's dropping off a cake for a brunch that bailey is like hosting and they wanted a cake from her and as she's leaving she runs into her abuser's best friend and it makes her nervous because it's just like, if you're here, I know that motherfucker is not far behind. And so she goes to the school, no, the daycare. And um, does she get a phone call? I believe she gets a phone call and then she goes to the daycare because um, the, the smaller baby girl had hurt herself and scraped her knee. And so when she gets there, Ever is told, oh, her daddy came and got her. Now, of course, um, Luca has been building this bond with her, with the uh, the baby girl, and he's on the paperwork allowed to come and 
uh, pick her up because the daycare that she goes to is his uh, Luca's mother. Like she runs the daycare center. That's her daycare center. Um, and so whenever it gets to, and she hears daddy, like, of course, because she's scared, she's thinking of that. So she's like, no, he got her. And she goes out to the parking lot and she's about to call Luca. Cause it's just like, you know, of course I can call my man. I know he's going to help me out with this situation, but Luca is there. And he calls her name. <clears throat> and, you know, at first she's relieved because she's like, of course, as soon as I even think about calling him, there he is. And she turns around and sees him with baby girl. And, you know, baby girl ran into her like, mommy, I hurt my knee. And Luca is like, yeah, I took her to go get ice cream. And because her emotions are all over the place, she basically spazzes on Luca. Like, you didn't ask me, don't take her nowhere without talking to me you should have called me you should have asked first and he's like since when do i have to ask you anything pertaining um to my little mama and she's like you just you'll never understand you won't get it just you know basically like i need space from you just back up and at first he's like nah like we need to talk about this and she's like luca I'm not doing this with you. Just back away from me. And next time, just ask. That's, you need my permission to take my daughter. And it's like, on the one hand, I get it. I, I absolutely get it. And I get her feelings. But then it's also like, y'all have built this relationship of being so close so instantaneously. He's looking at it like, you know, what the hell is going on? And so she leaves and he lets her leave and she goes to her mom's house and explains the situation to her and her mama flat out says, Oh girl, you are wrong. And you know, like how I said, uh, ever reminds me of, um, Winnie from a different world. It's just like, she's always cool, calm, uh, cool, calm and collective, excuse me. And, when she tells her mom, she yelled at Luke. Mom was like, not you. She's like, I'm not. And like, she felt even worse. And she's like, girl, if you don't call that man and make it right. And she's like, you know, I will, but I'll do it later. And um, her stepfather tells her, you know, your mama told me what's going on with old boy. Because whenever had first got there. Um, the ex had called the mom, like, you know, have you seen her? And all the mom told him was like, you know, she called me from a restricted line. She uh, didn't tell me where she was, but she said that she was okay and kept it at that. But the stepdad tells her, you know, your mom told me what was going on. Let him show up to my house if he wants to. And you ain't even got to worry about it, but let him show up here. And I got some for his ass. And she's like... You know, she loved him, man, so she let him talk or whatever. But then she, after a while, like, just tuned him out because the nigga's still going. And he going, he hyping himself up, like, I'll shoot that nigga as soon as I see, you know, just all this whoop, 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 whoop. And then she gets a call from Luca, and he's like, you know, where you at? And she's like, I'm laying down. He like, where? Because I'm at your place right now. And, like, yeah, he got her an apartment because at first he wanted her – and the kids to move in with him. And she's like, no, that, um, okay, let me back back a little bit. Cause they did have to have like a serious conversation where she told him like, I don't want you to pay for, of course he does it anyway. But when she was telling him, she's like, I don't want you to pay for nothing. I don't want to be, um, controlled by money. And he's like, I ain't trying to hear all that. I'm just trying to make your dreams come true and build something with you. So he, got her a house, he got her a truck, he got her a sprinter, uh, like, to move her cakes in, and had, like, her business, like, what is it called, what they do to the car, like, a wrap of her business on that car, he got her the business, so it's just, like, he's been looking out for her all the way, but anyway, he's like, you know, I'm at your place, so where are you? And she's like, you know, I'm laying on my mama's couch. And he's like, all right, I'm on my way to come get y'all. And she's like, you know, no, I'll drive. And he's like, it's late at night, plus you're crying because, you know, she feels bad 
about yelling at him and she's crying and she's like no and i'm crying because i'm pregnant which he basically already guessed because he's like there was more to me taking her to go get ice cream that had you so upset and she's like yeah it's because i'm pregnant he's like baby i knew that already um but it's something else as well and she's like yeah you're right and he's like you know what and you got all night to tell it to me just come home and of course she packs up the girls and for some reason her gas tank she let her gas tank get to eat so when the light come on she stops at the gas station and she locks the girls in the car and she tells the older what's the oldest baby name essence she said it was essence and emory i believe um you know lock the door don't let nobody in i'll be right back and she's like yes ma'am and so she goes in and when she comes back out the ex is there and he just starts way like attacking her and uh what was it like of course because she knows she's pregnant she just falls down to the ground and protects her stomach and um then a guy steps in and basically like beats him up off of her and then uh you know luca is at her place like okay it's been long enough she should have been home by now and he calling and calling and calling and not getting no response until he calls like one last time and a guy picks up like hello he's like man who the fuck is this answering my woman's phone and it's a guy that he knows um and he like uh man i found her like somebody was beating her up and i got her in the car and i'm on my way to take her to the hospital and so um then look like what about my girls though where are my girls at where are my kids at and the guy is like kids well, no kids in his car. He got kids. He took your kids. And Luca explains, he's like, you know, they're his biologically, but, you know, they're my fucking kids. And so he's like, man, I didn't see no kid. Like, so um, the ex has snatched them out of the car before he started attacking ever. And so he like, man, he like, man, let me do this. Let me, like, you know, help. I'm help find them and I'm gonna kill them because he took your kids. And so, um, Luca tells him, you know, get her to the hospital and then I need all hands on deck. Like, I I want that nigga head now. So he's like, of course, no problem. So um, he calls, who did he call? I think he FaceTime. He, he calls Lyric first. And he's like, baby girl, I'm so sorry. Like, he started apologizing because he crying. He like, I'm so sorry to do this to you, but I'm going to go back to jail because I'm about to kill another motherfucker for playing with me and um so she like three-way calls late and uh what is lyrics he's like i'm so sorry bro but that nigga got to go and late like he on that he like yes he does and he like you know don't worry about it we gonna get my nieces back you know and so uh lyric lyric goes to the hospital with ever i think luca goes up there too you know just to see her and at first she's feeling bad because she's like you know i feel like basically she could have did more to protect the girls but it's like what could you do when you're being attacked and he's like don't worry about it i'm gonna get them back just you just focus on getting better and you know she's still pregnant she didn't lose the baby because she crouched down and like basically protected her stomach from him so i think it's like what less than 48 hours uh they got the girls back and killed the ex and when luca does get the girls back you know they don't want him to leave their site it's like everywhere they go like he gives them a bath well he gives the baby girl a bath because i think she's only like two and essence is four so he lets her go in the shower but she like leaves the door open just so she can see him and the little baby girl is like my daddy is a bad man he hurt mommy and he uh no what is, and luca was like baby girl i know but did he touch you like did anybody do anything to you and she's like no but he did hit essence and she was crying and you know of course he's thinking in his head like that motherfucker lucky he did because i feel like digging that motherfucker up again just to kill him all over again 
but um the girls ask you know can well the the baby girl does she's like can you be our daddy now and he's like yeah of course you know i was already your daddy but you know he gets choked up when they ask and it's like of course of course i would be that um and so he go no he calls ever because at first he was gonna take the girls up to the hospital to see her but it's like they shouldn't see her looking the way she was looking it's just like no just wait for her to come home and then they'll be reunited and what did she say she said something crazy because when he explains to her you know like they're real close to me they um like they didn't even want to sleep in their rooms because at his place he had a room set up for them and they're like no we want to sleep with you we want to be real close and of course you can understand that because it's like they would not take their eyes off of him at all so it's just like i need to see you sir no and she's like i feel like i protected one like the baby in her belly while failing the other two and he's like come on now don't don't be like that that's not on you that's on him do not fault yourself for this so of course like i said in the end they killed him she saved the baby um he proposed and they got married because she's like i'm not doing no, uh like after she got out the hospital and she got better um that's when he proposed and so she called lyric and like i need you to set up a very small ceremony and Lyric like, girl, what? We got the money to do big and laugh. And she's like, girl, you know, that's not even who I am. I'm not doing all that small ceremony. I want to get married to my man and go on about our business. And that's exactly what they do. She uh, she ended up having another little girl. So now they have three girls. This is like the epilogue. This is the ending. Um, while she's six months pregnant with another baby. And... Was it his birthday or Father's Day? It was some type of holiday. But, um, he get no, the two girls, like, they gave him the gift of change. Well, you know, of course, from ever. They changed the baby's last name to his last name. So now everybody shares the same last name. And the, I forgot, what was the baby girl's name? Was it L? I think the, like the smallest girl's name was L and ever their quote unquote gift to him was revealing the gender of the baby in her stomach. And it was a boy. He was finally getting his boy. So they had their at, uh, happily ever after, excuse me. So this was real good. It's, it was real quick, fast paced for them to, as a couple to get to where they went. Cause who was when he proposed and ever called lyric sorry i'm going back but ever called lyric and told her she like face she said girl what kind of pussy you got to make my brother propose within three you know like of course she was already pregnant it's like girl pregnant and proposed to within three months like girl please reveal the secrets because um what after that happened with her uh, boyfriend or ex or whatever lyric like she hadn't dated in all that time and like, she refused to date anybody else because it's just like i'm not trying to put my brother in this situation ever again so she's like girl please reveal your secrets to me and she's like girl go somewhere but anyway that was the end of this book i'll see you guys back in the next episode where we jump right into lyric story peace and blessings my beautiful people